Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm covering disruptive tech stocks for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today we're going to talk about graphene stocks. And the title of this slide says graphene stocks and it lists a number of tickers and it says revenues are still shite. And that happens to be the case. For us, revenues are a proxy for market share and they demonstrate traction, so they're quite important. Now, before we get into talking about these stocks, I wanted to give you an example of investing in stories. So I would say probably coming up on 20 years ago, I was sitting at my desk and I had come across a video on liquid metal. This is actually quite a remarkable substance. The picture you see here, I think, is from back then. And I watched a video and I think it was Probably about three quarters of the way through that video, I had logged into my Ameritrade account and bought shares in the company. I was that excited about it. And that was before I learned about investing and that you don't invest in stories. Now, Liquid Metal had a great story, right? And they were supposed to be partnering, partnering with Apple and then everybody was going to have phones built out of Liquid Metal. And I think to this day, the company, you know, close to two decades later is still trying to find their place in the world. So we need to be very careful about investing in stories. And a lot of these surround miracle materials like graphene now i always like to use this analogy because it's super cool if you put a cellophane thick layer of graphene down and you put a pencil on top of it and had an elephant stand on that pencil it wouldn't puncture the graphene so graphene is remarkably strong it's conductive uh, it has all these miracle properties and there's been a lot of promise and potential use cases for it and the way this kind of started was that all these companies went and started to produce graphene. So they said, all right, there's going to be this big demand for this miracle material. We better start producing it. And then each company had a different story about why their graphene was better than everybody else's graphene. Then you had the graphite miners who said, we're actually going to reap the rewards from this. And these stories have been transpiring for at least the past eight years and we've been covering them over time now i took a quick look today we've written 32 research pieces on graphene so we've covered this extensively we first started writing about it probably eight or nine years ago and we've watched all these producers we've been to company meetings in the uk and watched what the companies have said We've talked to some of the founders of these companies, and we've really done a lot of due diligence around this theme. Why? Because we're as excited about graphene as everybody else is, but we're also realists who don't invest in stories. And what we've seen with graphene is a similar story to when we looked at carbon nanotubes. Those were supposed to transform the world, and they uh, may have had some uh, success stories out of nanotubes. They certainly didn't do what everybody was promised. So we like to check in with graphene about once every two years or so. And the last time we checked in, this was in June 2020, so that's coming up on several years ago. And we said, if you're a company that's involved in graphene, you need to show investors the money. And that means that you need to have meaningful revenues and consistent quarterly revenue growth tied to the sale of commercial products or services that relate to graphene investors are getting tired of promises. Well, it seems like every time we check in with graphene companies, we come to this same conclusion and today is no different. So when we look at the big four graphene stocks, you can see them listed here. They currently have a collected market cap of about 150 million pounds, which is around 187 million US dollars. So they're a very small set of companies. We know they're very popular in the UK. And if you look on the left, here you can see our market cap cutoff which is a billion dollars and by the way throughout this presentation we're going to be using us dollar unless noted otherwise and actually we probably haven't noted that the yahoo finance charts that you'll see used are all in gbp but it doesn't really matter because we're looking at trends so this market cap cutoff means we don't invest in companies with a market cap of less than a billion dollars so none of these companies even if you put them all together, are even close to that number. But we know there are plenty of investors out there who still uh, find graphene very compelling and perhaps invest in these companies or want to invest in these companies. So let's start by talking about the first one that we were somewhat excited about the last time we looked at graphene. Take a look at the chart on the left here. You can see that this company, and because this is in pounds, 
actually achieved meaningful revenues in both 2018 and 2019. That means they exceeded 10 million US dollars in revenues. And that's great. So we were quite excited and said, well, maybe that's the start of something great. Well, that was a head fake. So if you look here where we've outlined the two years on the chart on the right, 2020 and 2021, what happened? Well, revenue growth started declining. And sure, that might be, be because of the Rona, but you can only use that excuse so much. And expenses started increasing. So we're not seeing that revenue growth that we're looking for. And because these are all UK firms, they're only telling us what's happening twice a year. So we can't really monitor them on a quarterly basis. Nonetheless, we don't see Versarian as having the revenue growth that we had hoped for. At least it's not as bad as these folks. So AGM, this is a $15 million market cap money pit that continues to burn cash and just doesn't generate any revenues. You have to start generating revenues. If this miracle material is going to take the world by storm, we need to see some money coming from it. So AGM is another name that hasn't done much. Now, the company that seems to be taking off in respect to revenue growth is direct to plus. And we plotted out their uh, results here since they provide an update every six months. We've put these down here and you can see that they have steady revenue growth over time. This is exactly what we're looking for. And since the first half of 2021, they had uh, just over 4 million US dollars. If they can hit 6 million in the second half of 2021, they will have achieved meaningful revenue growth. So of the companies that we've talked about today, if you're a graphene investor, this is probably one to take a look at because they're starting to show consistent revenue growth. And in the description of this video, I'll put links to the research piece that we wrote around this video and also a research piece that we did somewhat recently that talks about what this firm does. And we're not going to get into that because that's an entirely separate conversation. As I said earlier, this firm is still extremely small. It wouldn't be something that we would ever consider investing in. But if you were uh, really wanting to invest in graphing, this is probably one that you would look at. Now, the last company here, Haydale, um, they're also showing sort of this decline in revenues that we saw with Versarian, except they haven't really achieved much. So it looks like the maximum they were able to achieve there is about 3.5 million British pounds in a single year. And they haven't been able to increase that since. That was in 2019. You can see they're reigning in costs. That's great, but we simply focus on revenues. Now, those are the four graphene producers that perhaps get the most attention. But what you need to be very careful about are any other firms out there trying to attach themselves to the graphene story and raise funds that way when they don't have a pot to piss in. Now, this is an article that we published back in 2014. It was titled, Is Graphene 3D Labs a $40 million company? And we took a look at this. This was back in the heyday of 3D printing. And this firm, we believed, did not whatsoever justify a valuation of $40 million claiming that they were going to start 3D printing with graphene. Now, we took a lot of flack for that by company representatives. We were attacked from all sides. This is all public domain. You can go read the article and see. Uh, the individual, and we won't name names, um, we did in our research piece, but that's only because these individuals deserved it. But this gentleman came by with some real scathing remarks. So there's no proof that we have you know, qualified analysts that we're short the stock. It's time to investigate us to find out who's behind our site and all this stuff. And, and it's quite extensive and it's not worth reading. But what I wanted to point out here is you can see the chart along the top. That's when we published the piece, that blue arrow. So we had identified the hype. We called them out on it and we were correct. Now this company, what was called Graphene 3D Labs, now goes by another name. It's G6 Materials. This world leader in creating value through the development of innovative graphene-based solutions has done fuck all since the eight years that we last looked at them with a market cap of just $11.5 million and a trickle of revenues that are on the decline. So you can see the chart in the bottom, that's a five-year chart, shows that, um, you can still see these bump ups. You see the volume increase and the bump up in share price. This stuff is, is is suspicious. And you know, 
we'll go back to the gentleman who made those accusations towards us. He was doing his job. That was the CEO of a, well, a $13 million market cap mining company today, which he no longer works for, which he clearly wasn't able to do much with. But that was his job. It was to go out there and to make sure that everybody thought favorably about his company so that he could raise capital. All these firms, there's nothing, potentially nothing malicious about what they're doing. They're running companies, they're trying to raise capital from investors, and that's what they do. The goal of every business is to survive, and the gentleman who came at us was simply doing his job. He was trying to raise money for his firm. So none of these companies you know, may, may have any sort of malicious intent, though uh, there are some suspicions around some. We'll talk about one in a second. Uh, but these are not anything you want to get involved in. Think about the opportunity costs of wasting your time looking at these micro, micro nano caps when most of these firms will accomplish nothing over time. And there's a reason that they're so small. So we recommend that investors stay far away from tiny little companies like that and even larger ones. So this firm came up on our radar when we were doing research for this video. $238 million Canadian firm that realized a whopping $55,636 in the first half of 2021. So they're not generating any sort of meaningful revenue. And most recently, they came out with a press release talking about all the investor relations money they're spending. It's very odd. And this includes paid research reports. Not sure why you would want to tell your investors that you were spending so much money on investor relations when you should be focusing on whatever your core competency is. And we're not interested in looking at what that is. We've seen firms like this, they're dime a dozen. What we could tell from a cursory look was that they're diluting shareholders, no surprise there. So you can see here how over time uh, in what, just coming up on two years, it looks like they've what, six times their outstanding shares. And this is just how these companies operate. Look at the shares outstanding, they issue shares, they're issuing them to their investor relations firms. We've seen this same story dozens and dozens of times. You know, when you pay for research reports and you dilute shareholders, these are just several red flags that we look for that tell us to stay the hell away from companies like that. And we put out a article here, I'm gonna to link to this in the description because it's useful. It's called Investing in Penny Stocks is for Dummies. And we put a bullet list of items we look for that tell us to stay away from firms. So how did we know Graphene 3D Labs was going nowhere? And it were, wasn't just the CEO that uh, came at us. It was a whole slew of individuals who were claiming that this was going to be the next Microsoft. Um, well, there's a number of things that we look at. We look for reverse mergers. We look for the company claiming that they have a patent or portfolio of patents that they hang their hat on that are going to be the foundation of the next Microsoft. Revenues are always just around the corner. Tons of memorandums of understanding and letters of intent. Uh, almost always there's trickle of revenues or no revenues. Um, you'll see investors on stock message boards, that's kind of moved to Reddit now, talking about how great the stock is. You'll get attacked if you say anything. And I would imagine that we we'll probably get some people coming around when we talk about um, the firm that we just mentioned earlier. I already forgot the name of it. Um, they have agreements, as we said, that don't go anywhere. They communicate in an overly aggressive manner with shareholders. So you'll see like a press release a day, that sort of thing. And you can always go back in time and see that they've broken their promises because you know after a decade of not being able to do anything, eventually you would think that investors would realize that the firm is going nowhere. So you're better off just avoiding the entire lot. When it comes to graphene, you know, these stocks are really going nowhere fast when it comes to revenue growth. And, you know, direct to plus, that looks great. We're going to keep an eye on what they're up to. So we'll probably revisit this theme in another several years. That's about the cadence that seems to make sense for graphene because it just hasn't taken off as we would expect. Um, avoid any newcomers with promises of graphene fortunes. I mean, everybody should be given a chance. But when some companies make it so blatantly obvious that they're trying to manipulate the price of their shares, and of course, that isn't necessarily, um, you can't criticize them too much for trying to raise money. As we said earlier, that's the job of the CEO is to make sure the business survives, but it's not your job as an investor to um, subsidize these ventures. So we're gonna check back in a few years. Please put your comments in the comments section. We'll address them there. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.